Hello student, welcome to our lesson 3. In this lesson, we are going to discuss some heating devices. We start with the first one, we have electrical lighting. In our first case, we are going to look at filament lamp. And a filament lamp looks like this one. It has a bulb. Inside the bulb, we have a gas that is argon or nitrogen. Then we have the tungsten filament. What happens is that when the current passes or the, when the current flows through the filament, this filament grows quite hot. And when it grows quite hot, it therefore produces light energy or it converts that electrical energy to light energy. Now the filament, as you have seen here, is made up of tungsten. And this is because this metal has a very high melting point. Its melting point is approximately 3,400 degrees Celsius. So it implies that the temperatures can go very high without this metal melting. That is why it is being used here. Now the bulb is filled with inert gas like argon and nitrogen. And the purpose of these inert gases is to prevent oxidation of the filament. Then from there, the second lighting device is fluorescent lamps. And a fluorescent lamp is commonly used. Nowadays, it is being commonly used. It has the following path. We have the heater electrodes that is at the corners here. Inside, we have the mercury vapor. Then outside, it's covered with glass. And then at the edges here, it is having a fluorescent powder. Now, these ones, they are more efficient than this lamp because, one, they can last longer and they have low running cost. Therefore, they, they become efficient than the bulb or what we call the filament lamp. And that is why nowadays you find that people are replacing the filament bulb or filament lamp with fluorescent lamps. Now, it consists of the following. You have the mercury vapor inside and this one produces ultraviolet radiation when the lamp is switched on. Now the radiation, remember we are talking of ultraviolet, these radiations makes the powder on the inside of the tube to produce visible light or to fluorescence or to glow and by so doing you find that now light will be produced. Then from there we have the electrical heating. In electrical heating, we start with the fuse. We have seen where we use the fuse. First of all, a fuse can be used in the three-pin plug, as we are going to see. We can use it in a three-pin plug. When you go to the mains electricity, that is a topic in Form 4, you will find where we are using different types of switches or different types of fuses. Now, a fuse has the fuse wire, and this fuse wire has to be of low melting point. Then we have the metal cartridge and the glass that is covering. Now a fuse is a short length of wire of material with low melting point. In other words, we can use what we call the tinned copper. It has low melting point so that it can melt and by melting it breaks the circuit and this now prevents excess current from flowing. So in other words, it will prevent the current from exits, exceeding a certain value. You always find that in a fuse, the value of the fuse is always written. For example, it is maybe written 13 amperes or 5 amperes. It implies that that fuse will prevent the current to go beyond the value that is written. Now this protects the electrical appliances and prevents via, fire outbreaks. For example, a 15 amperes fuse will blow out if a current of 15 amperes flows through the circuit. And this now will prevent the device from being destroyed. Because again, when you have a very high current, we, we found that it can produce a very high heating effect and it can even make the, the material to melt or it can even cause fire. So the higher the rating, the thicker the fuse wire. That is the fuse. Then number two, we have the electric fan. Now in this one, 
This one is used for ironing your clothes at your home. And that is why initially I said this topic will help you to relate with the things that you interact with at your home. You have seen a fuse that is being used all over in any electrical device. Now we have electric iron that you use in your daily life to iron your clothes. Now in domestic heating appliances, we have what we call the heating filament. And this heating filament is made of nichrome. Nichrome is, is coming from the unalloy of nickel and chromium. And this wire is not oxidized easily when the current turns it red hot. So that is why we are using the nichrome wire because it is not oxidized easily. And I'm saying all the heating devices or the domestic heating appliances, they have the heating element. Now the heating element in iron boxes are spread on the steel sole plate. You know what is an, an electric iron? It has a steel sole plate. So the heating elements are spread there and they are separated from it by a thin mica insulator. And this mica insulator will prevent from that heat from passing from the, the lower part to the other parts of the, of the iron box. And it's also covered at the top by thick asbestos pad. Remember, these asbestos are poor conductors of heat, which implies that now the heat that is on the steel sole will not be able to go up or will not be able to will not be conducted to other parts of our electric iron. Now, the heat energy converted by the element from the electrical energy is absorbed by the steel sole plate through the thin mica insulating material while the thick asbestos part limits the amount absorbed by the upper part of the iron box and therefore you can use the iron box without being heated. Now the temperature of iron base is regulated by metallic strip thermostat that is that can be adjusted thermostat will help you to adjust the temperature for example if you want a higher temperature you can now turn or if you have a lower temperature or if you want a lower temperature you can again turn you can be able to adjust and cut off the current at different temperatures suitable for the clothes or the material that you are that you are ironing then from there we have electric kettles now the heating element in electric kettles are fitted at the bottom of the container so that now the liquid that is being heated can totally cover the heating element. Now the electrical energy converted into heat energy by the heating element is absorbed by the water or the liquid that is being heated and it is distributed through the liquid through the convection. Remember the transfer of heat in liquids. So as because it is at the bottom, the, the bottom part will be heated and then convection current will be formed. Then from there we have electric cookers. Now heating element in electric cookers turn red hot and the heat energy produced is absorbed through conduction by metallic cooking pot which is in contact with the element. Now this heating element is highly coiled and this is to increase the resistance as you increase the resistance, we found that the heat energy will also be increased because there will be a lot of electrical energy that will be converted at that particular point where the resistance is high. Now the heating element of electric cooker is at this position as you can see. It is highly coiled. And then we have this coil. So th this element is the one that is converting the electric energy to heat energy and then this coil absorbs that electric that heat energy so this coil will become red hot and now when you put your material there you will find that you can cook using your coil then we have the radiant heaters now heating elements in radiant heaters turn red hot and the radiations they emit is directed into the room by polished reflectors now, radiant heaters will help to warm the rooms. So we have it like this one. 
we have the mains rod where you are connecting. We have the bright metal reflector, these parts. And now we have the heating element that we are saying that it is becoming red hot. And when it becomes red hot, it produces radiations that are now directed to the room by these polished reflectors. That way you find that now your room will become hot or warmer. Then from there we have the assignment. The assignment again is testing what we have just learned. So make sure that you have a lot of confidence and do the assignment. If you can't maybe recall, go back, revise and discuss with your peers so that you can retain your knowledge. Here in Colonet Africa, we want really to shape your tomorrow. So thank you and let us meet in our next lesson.